Oh, I don't get it, any of it. I'm tired. I need a break. I need sugar to recharge my brain. It hasn't even been half an hour since we started, Nelly. And did you forget about how much sugar you had this morning? You're saying you need more? I always have room for sweets. Mom gets upset at me if I eat too much, so I keep a stash hidden in my room where she can't find it. Nellie rifled through her desk drawer, pulling a, out a tin of cookies. I was impressed she didn't put on more weight, or whatever else that was. <laughs> can we go back? Nellie rifled through her desk drawer, pulling out a tin of cookies. I was impressed she didn't put on more weight with how much she snacked. Or maybe she was small because snacking was all she did. Either way, it was my first time in Nellie's room. There was a lot to take in. More stuffed animals than I could count. Photos of musicians plastered the walls. Stacks of CDs. A pile of makeup. Books. Oh, hey. That book's being turned into a TV show, isn't it? Girls in my class are really excited about it. Have you already read it? You bet I have. It's super popular right now. I'd be, I'd be left out if I didn't know what everyone was talking about. Uh, oh, oh, wow. Being a girl sounds complicated. So what's it about? <laughs> It's about an ensemble cast of teens, everyone with their own problems they are trying to deal with. It's super relatable and probably a pain in the ass. <laughs> and in the newest book, there is this huge bombshell about my favorite girl. It turns out the girl she likes is actually her blood related. Oh. oh. What's the matter, Nelly? Oh, nothing. It just got me thinking about it again. Oh? Anyway, it sounds like that girl has it pretty rough, huh? She could probably work through almost anything else, but there's not much she can do but let go if they're blood related. Is there really nothing they could do? Couldn't they maybe elope? to somewhere no one knows them? That's not a practical solution. It doesn't matter if no one knows them. They're still related. Nothing can change that. Though you can brush a lot of that under the rug in fiction. Just send them off. Say they lived happily ever after. And end it there. In the real world, their lives don't stop there can't slap a he happily ever after over the fundamental problem. She wants to live a happy, fulfilling life in our modern day society. Her best option is to let go and find someone else. Oh, uh, but it's a story, not real life. So they could definitely get together in that context. Y yeah, you can do that in stories. Hmm. I am probably overthinking it, but does Nelly? I considered myself fairly inept at reading people, but Nelly was so blatant about it, even someone as dense as me could pick up on the signals. No, don't be stupid. Her brother, for goodness sake. She knows that as well as me. Yeah, I'm reading too much into it. I have to be. I've only seen Nellie as a sister. Nothing more. It was true I had taken a minor interest in her before we probably... I uh, didn't get to read that far. <laughs> what did it say? Sorry. I felt as though we'd met somewhere before. Oh, sorry, before we properly met. 
But that was only because, as I told her, I felt as though we'd met somewhere before. Which, in retrospect, was probably because I subconsciously recognized her as family. I was curious about her because she was my sister. But what about her? I really had no memory of me at all. She was still a baby when our parents split up. She, she couldn't possibly have recognized me, even unconsciously. It would be harder for her to recategorize me from boy she knows to older brother. Could... Could my moving in feel to her like any other older guy suddenly intruding on her space? Regardless of how it felt, though, we were still siblings. Nothing could sever the blood that bound us. But even if she did, by some impossible chance, I have non-sisterly feelings for me now. It would surely fade in time. At worst, it would be nothing more than a fleeting adoration. She would sort through whatever she was feeling soon enough, and that would be the end of that. There are billions of other men in the world, after all. Regardless, it would probably be smart to keep some distance until that happened. At first, I had thought it best to try and break the ice as quickly as possible. It would be family our whole lives. There was a definite possibility that doing so would only make things worse. Obviously, though, it'd be preferable if I were overthinking the whole thing. Why don't we get back to work, Millie? I'd like to get a to a good stopping point so I can head back to my room and handle my own homework in peace and quiet. What? Just do it here. I can be quiet for you. Promise. It's nothing you did. Don't worry. I just have, I have trouble concentrating when there are other people around. You understand, right? Y y yeah, sure. I... I understand. The work you're doing is much more advanced than anything of mine. I'll stay out of your hair today, but we should still have super together. Yeah, we can do that. We spent most of the day in our own rooms, a drastic departure from yesterday. I felt kind of bad about lying to Nelly, knowing how excited she was to have me around. What I'd said about not being able to concentrate with other people around was just an excuse to get some alone time. Then again, having a little space was probably normal for kids our age. Certainly more so than being attached at the hip. And if Nellie's feelings for me did extend beyond simple, familial love, then I wanted to keep a nice, safe distance. That was just something I wasn't equipped to deal with. The question fluttered through my mind. What... what did I feel about her? She was a sweet girl, there was no denying that. I was glad to have her as my sister, that was true as well. And frankly, I enjoyed the affection, which is why I wanted to stay squarely in the brother-sister category. The question was, was that everything? Was there nothing else to my feelings for her? Deep down in my gut, something told me that wasn't the case. But there was some crucial piece missing. Like a vow of some sort. Mm -hmm. But what could it be? Could I have made a vow to her? When, I should say. At what point in my life was there even room for such a significant exchange that had taken place? None, as far as I was aware. The 
next day, we had school. We took the same bus from home and then split up partway. But that didn't stop her from texting me like crazy. Must have had to pull my phone out between every single class. Told you not to spam me. Because by the end of the day, I lost track of how many people had asked if I've gotten a girlfriend. Hopefully that would also settle down over time. I wondered how she would have been if our parents hadn't split up. We'd grown up together. Would she be any less clean? Would she hate me like other girls her age hated her, their older brothers? Had we just not been together long enough for her to find anything she disliked about me yet? But something told me. She wouldn't be any different, even without those 14 years apart. Was I letting the attention get to my head, though? Or was that just what I wanted to believe? There was someone who would love me unconditionally. And that it would be a pure, familial kind of love. And with none of the messiness inherent in the romantic kind. Was I just trying to project that fairy tale ideal onto my sister? Because if that was what I was doing, I really was the worst kind of human scum. Would mean that I wanted her affection, but only if it was safe and utterly detached from the person giving it. Okay, so back should we you, start Molly. narrating now? Yeah, yep. back to you. All right. It was a Friday night, almost a week since Mel had moved in. Mom and Mel's dad would be coming back from their vacation tomorrow, meaning this was the last night I would have alone with him. So, if possible, I wanted to spend as much of it as I could with him, but he'd have been strangely distanced this past few days. He wasn't being mean to me or anything, and we still made uh, and ate supper together all week. And it was lots of fun and all, but... That wasn't enough. I wanted to spend all day with him, like we did his first day here. Was that asking too much? Was he being too clingy and scared him off? Or was this how siblings were supposed to be? Today, like every other day in this week, we had supper together and then spent the rest of the evening isolated in our rooms. Most nights, I was able to enjoy myself alone just fine, but emptiness won out tonight. Watching videos on my phone, reading the latest big hit book, Listening to my favorite a albums, I tried everything, but none of it was any fun. Maybe. I'll check up on him, see if he wants to have a snack break, just something ni nice and casual. Do not put any pressure on him. That much should be okay, right? I'd done my best all week to not be overly clingy with him. So, I pretty much earned this last night together, hadn't I? How many times do I have to tell you? No! I hear you talking. Maybe he's on the phone with someone, but it's rude to ever drop, so... I'll play along with this little family farce for a year, but no longer. As soon as I turn 18, I'm out of here and that's that. What? I'm being self-centered? And you think you're not, Dad? I did everything you asked. The least you could do is let me have this. And anyway... You... you're not really leaving, are you, Mel? After we finally got this chance to live together, too. And 
What do you mean, family farce? Nelly, wait, uh, hold on, uh, slow down. I have to go, Dad. We can talk about this later. Well, this is awkward. Of all the conversations you could have walked in on. You know, it's impolite to eavesdrop, Nelly. I know, and I'm sorry, but I heard you shouting, and I just couldn't, so... Anyway, what was that about? Mm. Tell me, Mel! Oh, nothing much, really. You know, you know how, at first, you weren't exactly thrilled about having your family situation suddenly turned upside down? Well, I was the same. But you sounded fine with it then! Why didn't you object with me if you weren't happy about it either? I wasn't against them getting remarried. In fact, I wanted them to. I wasn't about to fight it and risk causing a mess of my plans to move out and go to university next year. Th then why did you call it a farce? You're not making one bit of sense, Mal! I'm not. I think most people would understand where I'm coming from with a little thought. But I suppose maybe you wouldn't. Considering you grew up with everything you could possibly want. Why do you sound so bitter? You're not the kind of guy that worked up like that, Mel. I'm not, am I? You've known me for exactly a week and you've seen every side of me now, have you? Just like I've seen every side of you, right? Well, I'll have you know I'm actually quite petty and cynical and full of self-loathing. I just kept it hidden away around you. You never once stopped to consider who was paying the mortgage on this house way too big for the two of you? You never wonder who was paying for your clothes and your groceries? Where your allowance came from? How you could afford to go on vacation to Paris? It never occurred to you that your mom's job alone wasn't enough to cover all that? Well, I guess you don't have to worry about the money if you're not struggling for it. Huh? Well, all of that was child support from my dad. There's no point in hiding it anymore. The first thing I thought when I stepped into this house was, wow. I sure do have it easy. I was more than a little bitter seeing you and your mom living luxuriously, while I only ever had the bare minimum. They even say it made me angry. That's what was hiding behind every smile. And there's your mom, who's my mom as well, and yet she. Mm. I am... Um, I'm really sorry. I didn't consider any of that. I'm so... so sorry. No. You don't have to apologize for anything. You're not to blame for anything, and I realize that. <laughs> I was just taking out my frustrations on you, and for that I'm sorry. I'd feel even worse if you had to grow up in the same condition as me. But that's why I want to spend as little time here as I can. Seeing your mom with my dad, it's too much for me. I get why you're not happy about it, but... But I still wish you to stay. You're more dear to me than anyone in the world, Mel. I don't want to have to be away from you. More than anyone in the world? After only a week together? <laughs> sure it doesn't take much to earn your top spot, huh? No, that's not true at all. It's more than that. It's so much more than that. Her affection flatters me, 
it's a fleeting thing, I promise. Before the year's over, you'll be the one asking me to leave. Every day I'm here is a day you can't live as comfortably as before. I will not! You're more important to me than a fancy lifestyle. My dearest Mel, I don't need nice clothes or sweets or anything else. The only thing I need in my ward is you, dearest Mel. Huh? Dearest Mel? You've never called me that before. Sounds like something you'd hear in a historical novel. Uh, 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 uh. I'm not sure where it came from here. I just said it without thinking. Please, don't think I'm crazy. Not crazy, but maybe a little weird. <laughs> oh, sorry. I didn't mean to laugh at you. As hammy as the name sounds, it's also kind of... I don't know, there's something strangely familiar about it, which I guess makes me weird too. Thanks to all this weirdness, I've managed to cool down. And while I'm being honest with you, Nelly, I kind of wish you had turned out to be unpleasant. Huh? Unpleasant? Why? Because then I could push you away until I left and not have to feel guilty about it. See? Like I said, I'm anything but a good guy. Now, this discussion's over. Sorry for all the grief I've caused you. We should get some sleep. My dad and your mom will be back tomorrow. They'll want us to greet them with a smile. I'll play along with their family facade for the next year and do my best not to make any waves. So, don't worry. Good night, Nelly. Go on. Back to your room. Good night, Mel. Just me getting myself excited over nothing. I had stopped to think about it. Maybe I would have realized we were really well off for a single moment, daughter. I works part time, and the only reason he had that Paris vacation was by chance. And he's way better at homework than me, too. And while I'm being honest with you, Nelly, I kind of wish you had turned out to be unpleasant. Because then I could push you away until I left and not have to feel guilty about it. See? Like I said, I'm anything but a good guy. Mel... Wishes he could hate me, doesn't he? If he could would make the next year so much easier for him. But I love him too much to act in a way that would make him not like me. Wait. There's one thing I could do to make him hate me. And also not back down on my love. Easy feeling lurked deep down that a very long time ago I was driven to do something unthinkable, not querying whether or not it made them hate me, whether or not it destroyed everything I had, and what's stopping me from doing the same now? It was doomed from the beginning. Nothing could make us not family. Nothing could stop him from leaving. And trying to keep my love bottled up was only going to make me miserable. He thought we've only been together for a week. That my feeling for him was flitting. That 
couldn't be further from the truth. I had my eye on him forever. And maybe this made me sound like I watched too much TV. But I was certain that if we had been together in a previous life, I would have loved him then too. No, no ifs. We were. And I did. I was positive. That was the only way to explain why I love him so dearly now. Nothing else made sense. Late that night, I snuck into Mel's room. I could see his chest gently moving up and down as he slept. Which reminded me, earlier in the week, he had been posting about how deep a, a sleeper he was. I was kind of jealous. I had trouble sleeping any time I had something on my mind. So, tonight was a lost cause. No matter how it went. Now, my Mel, I love you from the bottom of my heart. So please, sleep as deeply as you say. I prayed for this dream to just last a little bit longer. Even a few short minutes with Mao's mind would be enough. I would savor every last moment I could get. Because when he woke, the spell would break and everything would come crashing down. Huh? Oh, something. A tickles. <laughs> Nelly, what do you think you're doing? D did you just? I did. I kissed your mouth. Maybe you've realized it already. But I love you, Mel. And not as siblings, but in a romantic way. What? Why would you tell me that after today? Because I'd rather destroy my relationship with you than pretend to be family. It would be painful enough living with these feelings as normal brother and sister, but you won't even give me that. To you, it's all a farce. And that, that's too much for me to take. Not only can I not love you how I want, I don't even get to have a real sibling relationship with you. I'm letting it out and wow now. I love you, Mel. <laughs> you realize what you're saying, right? We're blood related. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. You can't kiss your brother on the lips. It's wrong. Oh, you don't have to tell me. I know exactly how wrong <laughs> what I'm doing is. I know that. <laughs> By doing this, we won't even be able to live as fake family. And even then, <laughs> I, I couldn't stop myself. My love isn't pretty. <laughs> it's not something I hand out to just anyone. It's, it's so intense. I would be willing to die for you right here and now. How much I love you, Mel! How much! I've always 
I robbed you. Why? Why did you have to be my brother? Why am I never allowed to be happy? Nelly, wait. I... All I want for you right now, Mel, is one of two things. Either accept my love or reject me in a way so cruel I'll never be able to love you again. Please, Mel. One or the other. I... I... I'm sorry. I can't do either. Somewhere, some deep part of me knew that was what he would say. He was too king, kind hearted to force himself to be cruel to me. And obviously, he can never accept my love either. But I could see in his eyes that there was more to his words. A distinct fear he was trying his best to conceal. Or perhaps it was closer to disgust. This was no surprise to me either. He only saw me as his sister, so of course my love was gross him out. Even if he didn't have an attachment to his family itself. I would never be a potential love interested for him. Any normal person would be turned off immediately by an advance from a family member. I knew he would react before I stepped through the door. That was the goal. I was here to destroy everything. That would be better than keeping him so close but forever out of reach. I knew what the consequences would be. But knowing and experience are two very different things. Seeing his eyes go wide in surprise and his lips contoured with disgust. It was like a thousand knives to my heart. At heart? My heart was in agony. Blood sipped from countless gaping wounds. My whole heart spilled forth, and I could do nothing to hold it back. Tears spilled forth, and I could do Nothing to hold him back. <laughs> Nelly, come back. so quickly I didn't have time to process it. Cold sweat streamed down my back. But one thing was clear, though. Even through the heavy fog in my mind, I had made a terrible mistake. It was stupid of me to tell her I couldn't pick either option. I should have chosen one or the other. But I still didn't know which was the right answer. I mean... Obviously, I couldn't accept her love. But did that mean I should have cruelly rejected her instead? Kicked her to the ground and called her every horrible name I could think of? I could never.
Morgana. Morgana, do you have your mic? Natalie. Morgs, are you with us? Morgs! <laughs> Is she connected? She is connected just on mute. Are you having a candy, Nelly? Yes, I'm having candy. <laughs> Let me chat with her on Discord. Sorry, I was having issues unmuting. It was like frozen. Okay. 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 Welcome back. Welcome back, Mort! Okay, you need me to do this one right here? Yes. Okay, sorry, sorry. You called her disgusting. You pushed her away. You were a terrible brother in person. Could I really never bring myself to do that? I mean, I was hardly a saint. If she had come just a bit further, I probably would have flashed back in a really ugly way. The biggest reason I hadn't was because I didn't want to make myself into the bad guy. Once again, I'm only thinking of myself. Damn it! I have to go after Nelly! I tried to get up out of bed, but my legs had turned to jelly. How pathetic. I had nothing to be afraid of, yet here I was, unable to move. Panic slowly welled in my gut, crawling up into my chest, my throat, my skull. What would I even say if I caught up to her? What did I want to tell her? Howard inside me whispered, just let her be. I was only going to be living here for a year anyway. This way, I could leave with no attachments, no regrets. This way, she could give up on me for good, keep her distance. It would be best for both of us. It would be easiest for both of us. That was what had motivated her as well, wasn't it? Yes, thing put would be easier in the long run. It would mean no more uncomfortable conflicts. And the door, it was so far away. There was no one who could go and bring her back. Not anymore. I didn't even know what I was supposed to say if I did. So why bother? Just... Don't look away! Hmm? Someone's voice rang out. No, not someone's. I knew that voice very well. Because it was my own. The shout rang strong in my mind, cutting through the thick fog that was my hesitation who had made a vow shouted with all his might, shoving aside the coward who chose to close his eyes. Don't turn your back now. Stop running from your problems. However mundane your life may be, you will at some point come up against a life-changing decision. And it may seem like an insurmountable wall to you, But no matter how difficult it is to make a choice, when you're back on it is the one choice you must never make. And you swore you never would. You would be stronger than the man who offered you redemption. I had no memory of that, any of it. 
but somewhere deep, deep within me, my soul, if you could call it that, I was crying furiously to myself. You must never forget that vow. Right. That's right. I made a vow to him. I swore it on my very soul. <sighs> Nelly! I made a mad dash from my room, not even bothering to change into real clothes. My legs were still a trembling mess, my head empty as ever. I had no plan, nothing prepared to say to her. There was no time to think about that. All I could do was go after her. I made the wrong decision once. But there was still time to turn back onto the right course. If I waited any longer, I would miss that chance too. Nelly! Oh, what are you doing here, dearest Mao? Nelly, there's something, there's something I need to tell you. I don't know what the right words are. I just have to tell you. I don't know how much I'll even be able to get across, but I want you to know how I feel too. What I think too. Oh, Father Mel, I know exactly how you feel. You made it perfectly clear how much you can't stand me. You didn't even have to put it into words. No, that's not it at all. Please, at least hear me out before deciding how I feel, Nelly. You laid everything bare for me, so I feel like I have to do the same in return. The, the truth is, I'm not a pleasant or a likable guy. I'm the one who deserves your scorn, not the other way around. Once you learn what I really am, you'll want nothing to do with me. Everything I've done has been for my own sake. I don't smile because I'm a nice person. I do it to avoid conflict, to keep myself from getting hurt. Say that about yourself. You've always been super nice to me. You're wonderful, like a real life prince. If I were really a prince, I would have come after you right away. In fact, I wouldn't have made you cry like that in the first place. I'm a sad, weak willed child, I'm constantly concerned about what other people think. I'm always trying to make myself look good. To tell you the truth, it felt really nice seeing how much you liked me, but it also terrified me, because siblings aren't allowed to share that kind of affection in our society. So I wanted to suppress that affection to a level that was safe for me, but without losing it entirely. I didn't think one second about what that meant for you, to focus entirely on myself. I was so scared to face it head on, to risk fighting with you over it. It took this long to bring myself to go after you. If you were so scared to... Why? Why did you come for me? Because I want to grow out of being so weak-willed. No one can go through life without conflict. It's just not possible. I mean, look at us. We're at a huge fork in the road ourselves. I realize if I didn't correct my mistake now, it would have consequences that last the rest of our lives. That I would lose you again. I don't know how to explain it. Something tells me this isn't the first time I've been at this crossroads. Nelly, I know my words probably don't mean much to you. I want you to know that I do care deeply about you. Or 
Well, I found it in myself to be able to care about you now. Made it very, very painfully clear how much you care about me. I have no reason to doubt your sincerity. It means a lot to me. My love isn't romantic like yours. It's familial. Even, even though he said the family thing was, was a farce. Yes. I called it that. That's not, that's not how I actually feel. I tell myself it was all a fraud. I could get away with just playing a role and not worrying about whether anyone actually loved me. I was so afraid of getting hurt, of butting heads, that they're free to think of it as real at all. See how much of a weasel I am? I, of all people, don't deserve to be called a prince. I'm constantly thinking about how I can avoid things, how I can make my life as easy and stress-free as possible. But I want to work on fixing that. All the while, despite being the weasel I am, I want to ask you to remain as family. I want us to feel comfortable talking to each other about anything and everything. I want this to be equals, like a brother and sister should be. Is that an option, Nelly? Is that something we can strive for instead? Is it out of the question for us just to be supportive siblings? I can't accept their love. And I won't ever be able to either. But I can't bring myself to kick you to the curb either. I know it's still not either of the choices you gave me. But at least, I think I'm prepared to not run from your feelings anymore. I promise to never disdain you for your love again. I'll never think it's gross or unpleasant again. I also want you to understand that the way I care about you is not the way you care about me. I want you to be conscious of my feelings as well. You're my sister, the only one I have. I want to be able to stand shoulder to shoulder with you, to overcome whatever trials we face together as siblings. Is that... An acceptable compromise? I do still want to have you in my life. I realize how self-indulgent I'm being. And I'm sorry. I'm trying to have my cake and eat it too. Asking you to stay in my life with one hand. And pushing your feelings aside with the other. Yes. Yes, you are. You're only thinking about yourself again. Do you smell? But still, it warms my heart to hear you say that. Nelly. I've never felt wanted by family before. And even if my love's do me to with her way, being able to be with you, my feelings out in the open is like a huge weight out my shoulders. How funny is that? It's actually a big relief. I'm no less sad about it, of course. I'm just even more happy to know you understand how I feel now? Mm -hmm. I never once expected you to take it so well. I was sure my life would be over the moment you found out. It was almost like... I already knew that was what would happen. But that doesn't make any sense. Since this, this is my first time. But now, it feels like I've managed to face your hat on. And my feelings for you have 
after messing up again and again. Yeah, I get the same feeling, Nelly. I'll stop pushing my perfect brother and friend's ideals onto you and just let you be yourself, my. Let me just try that again. Now. I'll stop pretending you're the flawless and be there for you to support you as your sister. And I, as attentive, inattentive, and self-centered as I can be, do the same for you, as your brother. Yeah, we'll be able to make it work. I'm positive. I'll even do my best to be able to see you as my brother. It will probably take some time, but I'm sure I can do it. So, please. Could you? Could you maybe reconsider leaving too? Let's all be a family together. For real. I will. I'll try to work out. I'll try to work things out with your. with mom. And I want to talk things through with my dad too. Great! <laughs> Now that my nerves have relaxed a bit, my niece feels like they're going to give out. As melodramatic as it sounds, I had to muster up a lot of courage to come see you. I promise you, it took me way more courage than you, Mel. <laughs> you got me there. By the way, uh... I... I think it's maybe time we headed back inside. We both came out in the heat of the moment, I know, but you're not really dressed to be outside, Nelly. Oh! Oh no! I completely forgot! N no one saw us, did they? I... I certainly hope not, at least. But we did make a pretty big scene, so there's a chance the neighbors might comment on it. Let's just pray no one could make anything out, anything we set out. <laughs> I cannot tell who this is here. Yeah. It's still Nelly, like you're looking at still on the down right corner. Okay. Right. Fortunately, no one had overheard our conversation, but rumors of the scene we had made that night spread through the neighborhood almost immediately. People took the intensity of our clash as a sign of how close we were, which was far preferable to them knowing what we were fighting about. And certainly a worthwhile price to pay Shit. For, uh, for not losing Nelly for for not losing Mal forever. <laughs> okay, it's fixed. <laughs> yeah, just switch it to Mal. <laughs> A little humiliation would at least fade with time. Nelly and I spent the following day, the last day of our parents' vacation, together cooking, cleaning, watching TV. It was a lot like our first day together here. When our parents returned, they were visibly surprised at how close we appeared to be. You guys hear anything in the background? Or no? I uh... kind of hear something. You do? Okay, give me one moment. I gotta shut that down. <laughs> no worries, dear smell.
Okay, I'm back. I had to turn off Netflix. Uh, that episode of Castlevania was really loud. Okay, though Mom was most taken aback at the fact that Nellie had actually done chores. Of course, he still acted as though Nellie was her own child. And I just tagged along and she remarried Dad. <clears throat> it was enough to make me question if I really was her biological son. As much as yesterday's conversation had helped me to have a more positive outlook, obviously it wasn't going to magically fix all our family problems. It was slightly discouraging being treated as a second-class citizen, but knowing I at least had Nelly on my side, I was able to feel like I actually belonged somewhere for once. So I wanted to return the favor by being genuine with her. Moving past the empty kindness I had shown before. My goal was to stop running from every little bump in the road, which I hoped would stop my problems from piling up into something insurmountable. It worked through things together now, the two of us. We wouldn't make mistakes we'd regret ever again. So I wouldn't have to lose her again. I think that covers the souvenirs. I'm really, really sorry for leaving you two behind. Don't fret it. We kept ourselves plenty entertained back here. Oh? Well, still, let's make the next vacation a family vacation. Let us know if you have anywhere you want to go, okay? We'll do whatever we can to make it happen. Hmm. Let me think about it. Oh, I know. I want to go to Paris again. With Nelly. And thus begin a new chapter in our lives. I haven't had any more strange dreams. I was never able to remember who I had made that vow to. Although my gut tells me that not remembering is for the best. A nagging feeling in my back of my mind cleared up entirely. Nellie had apparently been experiencing the same inexplicable sensation. And like magic, hers vanished too as soon as she had faced up to her problems with me. Maybe there is something more between us after all. Something in the distant past. Something significant enough that it etched itself into our souls, if souls even exist. Well, it's not like we have any way of knowing. And honestly, looking forward is much more important than looking back. Taking the first step towards becoming close siblings, we still have plenty of work to keep it that way. After all, this new chapter in our lives is still just that chapter. The next one could just as easily turn down a dark path if we aren't careful. At least on that note, I feel like I'm speaking from experience. Though of what? I'll never know. Another day, with a wide, a wide smile on her face. She's strong-willed, a little spoiled has an insatiable appetite for attention. Seems just a little more grown up than before. She's my one and only sister, Nellie. We're standing now shoulder to shoulder, brother and sister, facing toward the future. liked it. I'm it is a unique the twist. The chain has been broken. Yeah. It's a unique twist with Nelly Finally. rang out as the Mel. Ah, 
Ah, crap. Yawning on the job again. I'm glad I have to work at all, but jeez, could this place be any more dead? Who knows how long I can even keep this gig. Maybe I should start looking for something new. Oh, hey, a customer! Good afternoon! Hey, how's it going, Maria? Psh, it's just her. Hey, hey, your best friend came to see you at work. Don't be such a Debbie Downer. Yeah, no, you're not my best friend. Now that hurts, Maria. We've known each other since we were kids. And we even went on vacation overseas together. You don't get much better friends than that. If that's all it takes, then I have a bunch of best friends. But sure, whatever. You're my best friend, so you'll order lots of food and leave me a big fat tip, right? Hold on, before you continue, uh, Gabby, mute your mic. There's something being picked up. You're my best friend, so give me something on the house, right? Get your butt out of here. You don't order anything, you don't get to call yourself my friend. I ain't got no room for stingy rich girls. I never said I wouldn't order anything, and just because my dad's got a cushy job doesn't mean I'm rich. Like hell it doesn't. Your parents covered your half of our trip in March, and they're paying for you to study abroad. Here I am slaving away after losing my last job, and you're here strutting around like royalty on an all-expense-paid study abroad. It's an injustice, I tell you. A damn injustice. Uh, I'm sorry, I guess? Your pity only pisses me off more. Then what do you want from me? I'll let you off with a cup of coffee for a hundred euros. Hey, Maria, I know how much you like to tell me I'm so naive and innocent. But even I know a cup of coffee only costs around like 10 euros. Someone only goes to the fanciest shops around, huh? Here's your coffee, and a ham sandwich for takeout, right? Yes, please! It's lovely outside, so I'm gonna have lunch in the park. Huh. God, how I wish I could spend my days off frolicking about in the sun and flowers. Care to join me? You said the owner doesn't come and check on you very often, right? So he'll never know if you skipped out for an hour or so. You do realize being closed during lunch hours defeats the whole purpose of a cafe, right? But I'm the only one who ever comes during lunch hours. Silencio! Not another word. I don't have time for you and your stupid logic, girl. You're not wrong. The place hardly ever functions as a cafe most of the time. Which is exactly why I can't risk dragging it down anymore by closing during lunch hours. You take your work pretty seriously for someone who looks like such a hooligan. You don't have to get so worked up about it. It's not even your cafe, Maria. I'm sure not working myself up because I want to. I just have a big debt to the owner. He was a customer at your last job, right? Yep, yep. When I was at that fashion boutique. He wasn't even a regular or anything, but he went to crazy lengths to help me out when he heard I was in a rough spot. 
It would have taken way longer for me to get started here if he hadn't handled a bunch of the paperwork and shit for me. So I can't bring myself to half-ass the job, even if the owner himself just opened the place for kicks. I always thought it was strange how he wouldn't put any money into updating the decor, even though he's got plenty to spare. All I know is that he told me not to touch any of it. Probably keeps a bunch of memorabilia here or something. It's a shame too, because you'd probably get lots of new customers if you just modernize the interior. Make into a cute, quiet little tucked away cafe. You're probably right. Maybe I'll suggest it once I get to know him a little better. It's not exactly the most fulfilling job as it is. You should, and let me know when you do. I'll even lend a hand if the cafe gets too busy to handle by yourself. You're always there when I need someone to talk to. So to show my appreciation, I'll help you out with anything. Uh-oh, you'll do anything now, will you? How about working as a waitress and wearing a, youth and wearing a uniform of my choosing? Oh, I've always wanted to try being a waitress. I'm sure whatever uniform you come up with will be lovely. Do you have any ideas yet? A bunny suit. Uh, oh, what now? You'll be in a top cut so low your tits are falling out of the thing. We'll be rolling in so much freaking dough. Get your mind out of the gutter! That's a different kind of restaurant! <laughs> I'm just cheesing. About 10% anyway. Ugh, don't even joke about that! I would never wear an outfit that revealing in public! That means you will in private then? I bet you get that bunny suit real dirty when you wear it. Ward one in my life! We're best friends, right? So you can tell me anything. Give me all the steamy deets. I swear, I've never worn one! Hmm, it seems I arrived late. In the middle of something. Speak of the devil! It's a man who dresses his girl in a bunny suit himself! For the last time, I've never worn a bunny suit in my life! Hmm. Thanks to Maria, I was beginning to develop a headache. But that wouldn't stop me from enjoying my date with Yukimasa. We had met about a month and a half earlier, around the end of April, not long after I'd moved to Paris for my immersive language study program. Maria was already living here by that point, and one evening she took me out to a bar. Prior to coming to Paris, Maria had worked at a fashion boutique in Milan, but things hadn't worked out there, so she had to leave her job. Then, well, the rest had happened as she described it. On the other hand, I just fell in love with Paris while on vacation, so I decided to move here to get to know it even better. Everything was so vibrant and exciting and shiny and wonderful. I never felt so immediately moved by anything in my life. Maria probably thought I was here just to play around. She definitely made a few comments to that effect. Things like, what kind of starry-eyed idiot signs up for a language program after a sightseeing trip? You're in way over your head, girl. But no matter what she said, I did have more of a reason than that. She probably wouldn't believe me if I told her. But ever since the trip, 
I have this weird nagging sensation in the back of my mind. Telling me I needed to go back to Paris, that I had some kind of work to do there. Maybe it was all my imagination, and I really did just want to spend more time in the city. But if that did turn out to be it, so what? I wasn't hurting anyone by wanting to live in an area I really loved. It seemed like a perfectly fine reason to me. I didn't exactly have anything I wanted to accomplish while in France. But live a pleasant life was an honorable a goal as any, I thought. Noble ambitions are great and all, if that's your thing. But it's by no means everyone's cup of tea. There are plenty of people like me who only wanted a nice, happy life. But then again, maybe being able to think like that at all was a blessing in itself. I'd grown up in a comfortably well-off family, so I never had to worry about money. But maybe someone less fortunate than me wouldn't even be able to consider that same life. Putting it into perspective like that made me realize how sheltered I was. Which reminded me that once, so long ago, I could hardly say when, Maria told me that my naivete would bite me in the butt one day. I thought I was putting in a good effort to be better about that, though. But anyway, back to how I met Yukimasa. No shit, Sherlock. We're in France. And we went to bars together on our trip here, so what the hell are you freaking out about now? We only went to places popular with tourists then, and everyone was speaking English, not French. And when we had to use- oh, sorry. And when, and we, when had we had to, to use French, you handled everything. Maria, so I never had to actually use the language. But this time, I'll have to make my order in French by myself. Of course I'm going to get nervous. Yeah, that's kind of the whole point of an immersive language study program. You have to use the language or you'll never get any better at it. You should really be going out on your own and talking to people without accompaniment. I know, I know, but still... Uh, I envy you, Maria. You can speak well enough to work here. Come on, girl. You've been studying the language, too. I know you can do it if you just go out there and try. This is still... Oh, for God's sake! Enough twiddling with your thumbs in front of a door! In you go! Ah, ah, I'm going! I'm going! This is bad. Where did all those people around Maria come from? I wasn't in the ladies' room that long. Are they hitting on her? I know she can brush a few guys off without breaking a sweat, but... There's no way I'm getting through them. I guess I'll watch from nearby and wait for my chance. Excuse me, ma'am. May I? Uh, uh, if this is some lame pickup attempt... I'm not interested. Oh crap, I wasn't thinking and use English, not French. But he doesn't look like he's from around here either. So there's a chance he understood. Maybe. I was hoping to pass so I could get to the restroom.
Is it frozen? Should I restart it? Ma'am? What's on your screen? Uh, it just says, I'm so sorry, and, that, and nothing else. <laughs> Let me restart the stream. I really need to get a restroom. Yeah. Uh, it still says, huh, oh, I'm so sorry. Did you say that? Is, it, is it just me? Not I, at all. Did it cut out? It's no, you're now. fine. Uh, I want to crawl into a hole and die. That made me sound all stuck up and full of myself. He seemed pretty upset too. He didn't even smile once. He's ridiculously imposing and kind of terrifying too. This place is a bust. We definitely shouldn't come back again. Uh, Maria's still up talking to strangers. Um, excuse me, ma'am. May I? Uh, oh, oh, uh, what is it this time? I was hoping to return to my seat, so you could please let me pass. <laughs> uh, d did I just hear him laugh? It wasn't me he was laughing at? My apologies. I didn't mean to laugh at you. You were just so cute I couldn't help myself. C cute? Me? Um, just to be clear, uh, I'm not trying to flirt with you. But if you could, could you continue staying here, I expect others will try talking to you as well. Are you here alone? Oh no, I came with another girl, but she's kind of preoccupied. I see. Then would you like to find a seat and talk for a bit? Uh, you mean like me and you? It is to say, you're free to say no if you'd rather not. No, I mean, it's not that I don't want to. That's a relief. There are a couple open seats at the counter. Would you sit there, I'll buy you a drink. Uh, yeah, sure. He said he wasn't flirting with me, but, uh... Ha! <laughs> Finally got rid of them. God, I don't remember this place being so friggin' busy. I guess it's just Friday night, though. I fucking hate how guys assume you're free game when you're alone. You gotta be at least a Middle Eastern oil tycoon if you want to talk to me. What does that even mean? It means being rich. <laughs> oh, okay. I've never heard that before. Also, what's taking Pauline so long? Didn't she get herself... Hmm? She's with a guy? Oh, you dumbass. You don't just go along with a guy when he starts making moves. It's time for an intervention before things go tits up. Hold on. She kind of looks like she's enjoying herself. Definitely not like she's grinding her teeth and waiting for it to be over. Well, well, well. Look at you. Guess I'll leave those two alone for a bit. She's not a teenager. She can handle herself. Plus, talking to guys should help her with the language. Wait just a damn second. She's not even speaking French. Why come here on a language study if you're not going to study? Oh, fuck it. Not even worth my time. I'll just drink by myself. Hey, beer me up, barkeep. Oh, huh. So I haven't been in France very long then. Amusingly enough, I was only transferred here a month ago myself. Oh, neat. Speaking of, a month ago is when Maria and I came to Paris on vacation, which is when I started thinking about moving here. 
Hmm. So wait, you're saying you decided on everything and moved to a foreign country in a span of a month? Yep. Uh, I mean, yes. My mom was not too, um, not terribly pleased with me either. But once I set my mind on something, I usually make a beeline for it. <laughs> not to be so tense. Please, make yourself comfortable. Uh, if, if you say so, sure, I'll try. If you know, you know, when you first bumped into me, I, I was kind of scared. But it turns out you're not scary at all. You actually seem really sweet and respectable. Sweet and respectable, you say? I'm flattered. I don't see myself as either. You don't? Why not? Oh, I don't know. Just a feeling. Oh, I see. My dad did tell me the Japanese were a reserved and humble people. I didn't know how much that description applies to me, but I am surprised you identify me as Japanese. Since I arrived here, most people have assumed I was Chinese. Not that I particularly mind, Asians are a minority here. It can be difficult for Westerners to visually distinguish between different East Asian ethnicities without sufficient exposure. Which is why I'm so impressed. My father's Japanese, actually, which is probably why I could tell. Well, it really is a small world, huh? Had you been to, to Japan? I haven't, unfortunately, but I absolutely want to someday. Maybe you could teach me Japanese to prepare? I'd be happy to. Though, shouldn't learning French be your first priority? Oh, right, I totally forgot. My friend Maria actually brought me here tonight so I could get practice talking to people in French. But I ended up using English the whole time. Ugh, everyone I know is so skilled. I look even more useless than I already am in comparison. You seem incredibly talented in my eyes. You speak your native tongue in English. And once you have French down, it will make you trilingual. Imagine the work opportunities being fluent in three languages offers. Meanwhile, I have no confidence in my ability to get a handle on French. Uh, really? I assumed you were a French pro, since you work here and all. Oh, hardly. We all speak English in the office. When I go to restaurants, I serve in English as well. Learning one foreign language is almost a death to me. I don't want to imagine how bad a second would be. Oh, wow. So what do you do for work? I'm a systems engineer. I primarily develop tools for use within the company. That... that sounds like difficult work. Not at all what I expected. You're well built, so I was guessing something more physical. <laughs> I enjoy working out as well. I frequent a gym and also study martial arts. Wow, impressive. I can admire that. If a bad guy shows up, you'll have no problem taking them down. I suppose. Did did I say something? Or was I imagining the hesitation in his voice? Maybe he's working out for some other reason? I can't think of any other reason. He might, though. Maybe he's getting into street fights. Nah, he would never. In any event, if you need help with any manual labor, feel free to give me a call. I can handle just about anything. It seems bad guys like to stay away from men built like me. I don't get to use these muscles for much else. So I'd be thrilled if I could put them to use helping a nice young woman like you. Oh, my apologies. We're only just men here I'm acting like we're friends. I may as well be flirting with you. It was a very nice thing of you to say. Yeah, that was definitely my imagination earlier. He's too much of a sweetheart and gentleman to be involved in anything unscrupulous. 
So, um, assuming that wasn't just you trying to sweet talk me, is it alright if I actually call you if I need something? I just moved here, so I'm drowning in boxes. I'm also going to need to get furniture. That's a huge pain to do alone. And of course, I'll reward you. I can buy you dinner somewhere or make something at my place. I could ever turn you down. Don't worry about repaying me. You can use all the reward I need. Uh, 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 okay. You're, uh, you have a lot of practice doing this, don't you? How many girls have you wooed over with lines like that? Huh? I, I don't have practice wooing anyone. What do you sound so tense all of a sudden? Now. Telling me that defeats the purpose, I feel. I promise you, as difficult as it is to believe, it's rare to me to be so comfortable speaking with a woman at all. This is certainly far from an everyday experience for me. Also, um, well, to be perfectly honest, this isn't the first time we crossed paths. Uh, we have? What? More specifically, I'd seen you before. You said you were in Paris about a month ago on vacation, right? Well, a month ago, I had a meeting with my boss at a cafe. And I caught sight of you walking past through the window. It left quite an impression, so I remember that moment very well. Oh, are you sure that was me? You only got a glimpse. It, it could have been anyone. Oh no, did I do something embarrassing and that's why it left an impression? No, not at all. You were just eating something as you walked. Maybe a sandwich? Nothing particularly out of the ordinary. I was what? Oh no, 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 no. You forget about that right this instant. It never happened, you hear me? Huh? Why? I don't see any reason you would. Oh my god, it was muted. You caught me at my most vulnerable eating a sandwich alone! I'm so humiliated! Uh, if you say so. Still, I don't want to forget that moment. You seemed so happy, and your joy was infectious. Uh, just, just so you know, I'm not a glutton! <laughs> I never said you were. Anyway, back to what I was saying. When I saw you then, I felt as though that also wasn't our first time crossing paths. Which is why when I saw you today, I was determined to talk to you. I only caught a glimpse of you the first time, so I'm glad I was able to hear your voice this time. Uh, I... Oh, oh, I see. I know, it sounds like something of a fairy tale. And probably every pickup artist guide up there, too. I apologize if I scared you or make you uncomfortable. No, no, don't be. I'm just flustered is all. And actually, as strange as it sounds, I kind of want to believe it's true, too. I don't want it to turn out to be just some cheesy pickup line. I mean, how romantic would that be? That we have some sort of deeper connection from before we know. It could be fate that brought us together again. You never know. <laughs> Starting with that encounter, Yukimasa and I bonded very quickly. We exchanged phone numbers. I called him to help with moving stuff. I went to his place to hang out. And, in short order, we went from acquaintances to friends to a couple. 
I had never been in a relationship before, and I certainly never expected my first boyfriend to be a Japanese man I met while studying abroad in France. And when I told Maria we'd begun dating, she... He's definitely pulling a fast one on you, girl. Either that or your head's still stuck in the goddamn clouds and you're not seeing clearly. You barely even know the guy, Jesus! Don't come crying to me when it goes south. I swear, watching you was going to take 10 years off my life. You can barely even keep your feet on the ground. And then she gave me a big, heavy sigh. And that was that. Sometimes, I feel like Maria was my mother. I could understand why she was concerned, but I was confident I could tell the difference between a good guy and a dangerous one. Yukimasa was always such a sweetheart and a gentleman. I was positive I had nothing to be worried about. Sorry to use you as a meeting place, Maria, and thanks for the ham sandwich. Don't sweat it. I give you shit sometimes, but I really am bored out of my mind here, and having someone to talk to helps the time pass. Oh well, that's a relief. I'll bring some people from my language program sometime then. Have to help get some business in here. Two of you such good friends, I almost feel bad about taking Pauline away from you today, Maria. We'll have to go somewhere together. Another time. All three of us, I'm sure we'll have a great time. Uh, sure, I'll think about it. That's the most insincere I'll think about it I've ever heard. Well, can you blame her? I'd be terribly excited about being invited to accompany a friend on a date either. I just meant it as a fun, casual thing though. More like I don't want to spend any more time around him than necessary. But I also don't want to say or do anything to upset Pauline, no matter how much he rubs me the wrong way. Every word that comes out of his mouth feels empty, fake, calculated. But that's just what my gut tells me. I don't have anything to back it up. And it's not like Pauline would hear me out either way. Once she puts her trust in someone, she's blind to anything that challenges that. Part of me wants to let this run its course and see if that teaches her a lesson, but I'm afraid he'll end up doing a lot worse than just betraying her trust. Is something on your mind, Maria? You look very deep in thought. Uh, oh no, it's nothing. Just thinking about how much of a drag being in a third wheel would be. Don't think I've forgotten about how you ditched me for him at the bar last month. I, uh, I didn't ditch you. And anyway, you were busy talking to other guys at the time. And then after that, you hit it off with that guy at the counter. Uh, uh, the one with the wavy hair, was it? Excuse me? On what planet did that look like we were hitting it off? The only thing I want to hit it off is his nasty mop of a head, ideally straight into a fucking grain thresher. It, his hair wasn't that messy, I don't think. Forget about me, though. Can't keep your man waiting forever. Go on, get out of here. Hey. 
Hey, just a sec. Not you, Pauline. The Monsieur. I don't mind at all if you call me by my name rather than the Monsieur. But yes, I gotta help you. You hurt Pauline, and it's your head I'll be ripping off, you hear me? You wound me. They look the kind of man who would hurt her. Yes. Just covering my bases. Very sorry if I offended you. Not at all. Pauline's been blessed with very loving friends. You can rest easy, Pauline. It's in good hands with me. You have my word. All right. I'll hold you to that, too. Hey, what's the holdup? What are you two talking about? Oh, uh, nothing important, Pauline. Let's get going, then, shall we? Yeah, later, Maria! Your rest easy holds as much weight as a wet paper towel. I just wish I could put a finger on what about him makes me so uncomfortable. Hopefully it's just my imagination. Uh, it's beautiful out today. There's something lovely about lovely weather like this that makes a lunch taste all the better. It certainly does, Pauline. What should we do when we're done here? Was there anywhere you wanted to go, Hyukimasa? I want to go wherever you want to go. I love being with you. No matter where that is. Hmm. That's what you always say. Is there nowhere at all? We don't have to limit ourselves to Paris either. As long as it's close enough for a day trip, we can go anywhere. So tell me, where do you want to go? Hmm... I'm not sure I can come up with something to put on, on a spot like this. How about we go see a wrestling match then? Yeah, let's go! <laughs> uh, wrestling? I didn't realize you were a fan of WWE. Uh, I, I'm not. I never watched wrestling in my life, but I've never really been able to deal with rough stuff like that. But you like working out and physical activities and stuff, right? Fake fun! So, I thought maybe you'd be into wrestling too. Oh, I see. You were trying to choose something I would enjoy. I don't have any particular interest in watching sports, though. No? That's a shame. Well, in that case, mm, I don't know. What should we do? I'm all out of ideas. There's nothing wrong with just relaxing here in the park. We don't have to be doing any something for me to be enjoy being with you. In fact, I'd like to say I like this kind of peaceful time with you the most. That is, you don't mind the boredom. No, of course not! There's nothing boring about spending time with you, Yugi Masa, no matter where, what or where it is. <laughs> then today's schedule is decided, lazing about in the park. Hey, Yugi Masa? Do you have any hopes or dreams for your future? Hmm... I can't say anything comes to mind immediately. At least not until I can be certain work won't interfere with it. What about you? <laughs> I sure do. <laughs> do you promise you won't tease me for it? I would never.
What I want most is to spend a nice, quiet life with you. I don't need anything extravagant. Just an ordinary life, slowly growing older, having three, maybe four children. We'd never fight, and eventually, before I knew it, I'd be an old lady. Thinking, ah, uh, it was an uneventful life, but it was the best I could ever ask for. That's, that's the life I... Pauline? What? Oh, uh, sorry. I kind of spaced out there for a second. I get the strangest feeling that I've said something like that before. Is that so? Um, not the first man you used that on? Uh, as if! You're the first guy I've ever dated, Yukimasa! It must be deja vu or something. Hmm, a glitch in the Matrix. Wait, do you think I'm lying? That I've been with other guys before? Oh, no. I would never accuse you of being dishonest. It just struck me as unusual. Because I feel as though I heard those words before as well. I know this might make me sound like a little girl with her head in the clouds. But do you believe in reincarnation? Somehow, it is really real, then I suspect we may have known each other in a past life. Wouldn't that just be the most wonderful thing? Imagine that, a bond so strong it transcends even death, it would make us soulmates, literally. How romantic. Yeah, sorry, I'm getting too weird, aren't I? You have to be crazy to believe in reincarnation and fate in this day and age. <laughs> but I still think it's a nice thought. That it is, Pauline. I cannot imagine anything more beautiful than us being bombed by fate. Yukimasa? If by some chance reincarnation is real, our paths have crossed in fear's lives as well, then the universe has a twisted sense of humor. Soulmates, we're anything but. I'm the ball and chain that drags your soul down to damnation. You have to be cursed to be stuck with me for so long. There's no other explanation. That was too lazy of a day. Even managed to sneak a nap in there. Today, we're both sloths. There isn't much... There isn't much daylight left. Let's get something for dinner and then head home, shall we? Oh, I have an idea. Can we go to the grocery store instead? I want to make dinner for you tonight. Now that sounds like a wonderful idea. my pleasure. I fear this is a lot of groceries, though. What do you need to make one meal? Yeah, it kind of is. <laughs> I really was about halfway through, but couldn't stop. There's just so much stuff I want to try. I can't help but throw it all in the cart. It's fine. What we don't use can go into the freezer. So, what are you making? You still haven't told me. Mm, well, not telling. Anyway, I'm borrowing your kitchen. 
You just wait at the table and relax. I don't need any help. Uh, all right then, if you insist. Although I am good at chopping stuff. Pauline's never made anything for me before, and frankly, I had trouble imagining her spending much time in the kitchen. But I'm sure it'll be fine unless something goes horribly wrong. Ah, it's shooting fire! Hmm. Uh, uh, are you okay, Pauline? Indeed, there were, for certain definitions of minor, I suppose. I didn't burn your place down, so all's well that ends well. Now, dig in before it gets cold. Before I begin, may I ask what is you made? Uh, you, you can't tell? I wanted to make something Japanesey for you, so I did a beef and potato stew, miso soup, and white rice. I see. I uh, thought was porridge, chili, and a brown mystery goo. It, it it doesn't look very appetizing, no. But I promise it tastes good. I tried it myself. I I, I trust you. I, I trust you. Well, here I go. Mm, mm. So, what do you think? It's not bad. Thank you, Pauline. Thank goodness I didn't have to lie to her about that. It's a bit under strong, so I would probably raise my blood pressure, though. Out of curiosity, what sauce did you use in the stew? Mm, I just followed the recipe and used Worcestershire sauce. Is that how you say that? There's different ways. For just a little beef and potato stew, you're supposed to use soy sauce. Do you have that here? Uh, really? We do, but it only said sauce, so the thought never crossed my mind. It still tastes quite good, though. It's just a more Western flavor instead of Eastern. of your home in Japan. I'll do better next time, so please give me another chance. <laughs> of course, I'm looking forward to it. I want to do everything I can to please you, Yukimasa. So if there's anything you want, please don't hesitate to ask. Uh, tell me, Pauline, how are you... How am I with what? Uh, never mind. Uh, forget about it. Uh, How are you able to love me as much as you do? It's not even a fair question. She's so take with me because I'm pretending to be exactly the kind of man she wants to be with most. It's, um... It's gotten late, huh? So, I was, uh, I was thinking tonight we could... Yes, you're right. We should call it a night. I'll take you home. Uh, is it okay if I stay the night? I mean, it's been two months since we started dating, but we still haven't stayed the night together. So, you know... I'll take you home, Pauline. D do you not want me to stay the night, Yukimasa? Oh no, that's not it at all. I would love to have you. But I'm, I'm sorry, I have some other business to attend to this evening. So we have to make arrangements for another time. Yeah, that's all right. Wouldn't want to get in the way of your plans. Thank you. I 
I can make it the rest of the way from here. Thanks for walking with me, Yukimasa. I'll walk you the whole way. It's late. Better be too safe than sorry. <laughs> You're such a worrywart. It's barely even nine and we're in the city. I'll be just fine. Most people don't always mean safer, but alright. Just try to stick to large, well-lit roads. Don't go down any dark alleys, understood? There's been uptick in sightings of shady-looking gangs prowling around lately. I'll be fine! See you next weekend! I'll call and text! See you. Good night and be safe, Pauline. Night to you too. I have other business. Oh, oh, go ahead. I have other business to attend to, so we'll have to make arrangements for another time. You came out didn't seem to realize it, but he chased me out with almost the exact same line on several other occasions. I'd even asked him what business he had, but he would never give me specifics. Just that it wasn't important. At first, I assumed he was being a gentleman and trying not to rush into things. Or that he genuinely did have something else to take care of. And it wasn't like I thought he was lying now, but there was only so many times I could take being turned down the same way. Before I started thinking maybe he didn't like me at all. Or maybe he had something to hide. Everyone has skeletons in their closet, things they don't want people to find out about. I wasn't going to ask him to spill everything to earn my trust. I wanted to be reasonable as much as I could. I didn't want to do anything to make him uncomfortable. I wasn't going to chew him out for not telling me every little thing, and I certainly had no interest in getting into a fight with him over it. The less conflict in a relationship, the better. I was sure all he needed was more time. He would let me stay over when we were a little closer. We'd only been dating for two months, after all. It was too soon to get worried. Everything was going to be fine. I repeated that to myself several times and then decided to head home. But for some reason, my legs refused to move. You haven't changed one bit. You won't even give someone the time of day if they're saying anything that contradicts someone you've decided you trust. Something Maria had said to me a long time ago floated up into my mind. Maria always did have trust issues, but she'd gone too far that time, accusing him of doing something terrible, so I snapped back at her, something I rarely did. Why had that, of all memories, come back to me now, though? I had to trust him, or what was the point? Sure, he could be eerily kind, and he was hard to read from time to time. But if I didn't believe in him, who would? Wait, I'm confused. Maria never said that to me, did she? I know she's given me other warnings. 
but I can't think of a single instance in which she told me you haven't changed one bit. My head hurts. The image in my mind of that moment wasn't of the cafe where Maria worked, but a small room in a cottage I had no memory of. It was so vague I couldn't make out much more than that, though. Yet, despite not being able to place the memory, I had the distinct feeling it was something very dear to me. But it didn't end there. Is that me? Uh, uh, I guess so. I guess so. <laughs> okay. You are a woman who is capable of making decisions for herself. I know you are. Yes, you've placed your complete faith in one man. But that hasn't stopped you from considering what you should do with your own life. You were never short-sighted. Next. Who is that? Came a man's voice I had no recollection of. Who could it have been? And why did it sound like you knew me? What was going on? I was gripped with sensations, with a sensation I didn't have the words for. There was a man's voice in my head. I didn't know him, but he seemed to know me. To most people, that would probably be unsettling. But for reasons I couldn't explain, the sound of his voice was more reassuring. It felt like a light in the darkness, guiding me away from the path to destruction. Only not my present self, but a me far in the past. Something told me his words were still relevant to me now, though. I'm sorry, Yukimasa. I don't want to dig up your secrets. I just want to be able to trust you. I want to know you better so that I can love you better.